Welcome to the 20th annual Appalachian Teaching Project. Um, great to see you. I know it's a, been a very odd year. Can we say that? It's been very disruptive on many fronts. Um, and I have to say, when I uh, started with ARC in 2002, it was actually the second ATP. And at the time, as Ron mentioned, uh, there were a lot of post 9-11 security concerns about having students travel to Washington, DC. But uh, we took precautions. It went off without a hitch and has been extremely successful um, since then. So I want to thank you all for your hard work. I want to thank uh, the faculty for teaching classes this year in a very uh, difficult um, environment and students for juggling all your other classes, all of your other kind of personal educational uh, lives to uh, participate in this. So my role here is just to tell you a little bit more about both the Appalachian region and also about ARC. So let me uh, share my screen here. Hopefully you all can uh, see this slideshow. Give me one second here. Let's see. Can we see that? Jessica, we good? Okay. So depending on your background, uh, if you're from Appalachia, if you're not from Appalachia, if you knew anything at all about this region, I can almost promise you that you did not envision this map that I am showing you right now. In fact, one of the uh, consistent feedback items that we've gotten from hundreds and hundreds of students is not only did they uh, learn more about the region and about their own communities, but it really helped dispel some of their uh, notions about what they thought Appalachia was. ARC does not really define uh, this term. Uh, this is a congressionally uh, defined term. Um, it is, of course, 13 states. So it's the entire state of West Virginia and then portions of 12 other states. It's 420 counties, little over 200,000 square miles, and almost 26 million Americans call Appalachia home. So it does, of course, follow the spine of the Appalachian Mountains. Um, what we've also seen over the years is a lot of, you know, isolation, poverty, underinvestment, uh, disinvestment over time. Also, the region itself is disproportionately rural. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't cities, because there are. There are places like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Charleston, West Virginia, other metro areas. It's a region, I think, of economic uh, contrasts, meaning there is no one size fits all communities. There are community. There are places that are relatively prosperous and others, as you know, that are really struggling. But one thing's for sure, uh, it is a region of incredible assets. Scenery, outdoor recreation, forests, water, agriculture, uh, a lot of cultural assets too, arts, artisans, music, uh, food, heritage, history. And um, I would say, in addition to that, and maybe most important, uh, are the people of the region, leaders, institutions, and students like, and faculty like yourselves that play a, play a vital role in helping to ensure Appalachia is successful. So I'm also not aware how much you know about ARC. Um, and that's partly by design, because in 1965, Congress established ARC to address some of the, some of the issues that made the region um, a region apart, I would say, from the rest of the country. The Appalachian Regional Development Act really established a mandate to focus resources on reducing the socioeconomic gap between the region and the rest of the country. So ARC's vision is, of course, that it's a region of incredible opportunity that achieves uh, parity with the nation. And our mission is really to build capacity and boost economic growth in uh, the 420 counties of the region. So ARC is not like any other federal agencies. Um, it's, it's very unique in that it's a partnership. So there's a federal co-chairman who you just heard from earlier, who's appointed by the president and it's confirmed by the Senate. But the 13 governors and their proxies or the alternates um, also play an equal role. And that's what really what makes it a partnership. They decide things like budget, like policy, they review projects and other other kinds of activities. And then there's a subordinate staff of only about 60 of us here in DC who um, help administer the program 
Um, and of course, we have state assistance as well in many of the capital cities. So back to this gap I mentioned earlier. So back in 60, 1960, um, you'll see in the map here on the left that um, the region itself exhibited widespread poverty in terms of high poverty counties, places that had at least one and a half times the US average. If you look at that, you'll see red kind of all over, right? Um, but take a look at the rate. This is the most recent data we have. What you've seen over time is that poverty level and counties, in fact, uh, with high poverty rates um, decline over time. So now it's uh, pockets of poverty throughout, concentrations with, of course, places like Central Appalachia, Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, even some counties further, uh, further south in Mississippi. So the map has gotten um, much different than we saw years ago. One of the themes that we've noticed at ARC over time is that, in fact, a lot of things have improved um, socioeconomically. You'll see, for example, here in this chart, the yellow bar chart in particular shows uh, poverty rates um, in Appalachia. And then next to that in the blue, you'll see uh, poverty rates in the rest of the country. So what have you noticed here if we just take a quick look? Well, there's a gap. That gap has generally improved quite a bit over time, but it has always been larger than uh, the rest of the country. Same thing with income. Incomes have improved as well since 1969. Um, the yellow line is the region, the blue line is the rest of the country. So it's this kind of catching up, if you will, uh, that is our challenge. One more I'm gonna throw at you, education. Uh, we know that's an important uh, motivator for economic development, personal growth. Again, this is just the share of population uh, with a bachelor's degree or higher. Again, you see Appalachia improving consistently over time, but same theme, the rest of the country um, is also improving. So this gap is what ARC tries to do, address it, tackle it through things like grant making, um, other kinds of activities, research, data, uh, and convenings like this one. So uh, speaking of projects, ARC funds about 500 projects a year uh, in things like business development, workforce training, um, infrastructure, asset-based development, and then leadership and community capacity. Um, we fund these through lots of different programs um, that I won't get into right now, but things like the Power Initiative, Inspire Substance Abuse Disorder Competition, and our new nonprofit resource center. So back to power for a second. This is a special uh, pot of funds provided from Congress to tackle uh, some of the most persistent issues in coal impacted communities. So those of you particularly from Kentucky, uh, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, and even Alabama know this um, personally that the coal industry has um, unfortunately declined over the past uh, several years. And this has impacted a lot of communities um, up and down the mountain chain, not just in places that have coal mines, but maybe transport coal. Um, the class topic uh, from East Tennessee State deals with Irwin, Tennessee, which was a railroad town um, until recently, and trying to figure out what they can do, how they can reimagine their future, right? So many of you have seen this firsthand, but the Power Initiative provides dollars and resources um, directly for those uh, counties that have been touched by, in some way by the adverse impact of the, the coal industry. Another topic that we're gonna be talking about both today and a little bit tomorrow is substance abuse. Um, we've seen overdose, overdose mortality rates in the region almost half, 50% higher than the rest of the country. We've seen combined what we call uh, diseases of despair death rates, things like suicide, um, chronic liver disease, opioid addiction, 36% higher in Appalachia than the rest of the country. Uh, you know, because you've witnessed it firsthand and you've seen it in your communities that this is a major problem. Um, however, you're gonna hear a little bit more right after I speak about ARC's efforts with the recovery ecosystem, how we can all um, join forces to tackle this from law enforcement, from workforce training, from job training, to um, substance abuse, abuse treatment, as well as things like housing and transportation and other kinds of recovery services. 
So, of course, underscoring all of this is data, maps, uh, studies, whether it's stuff that we do in-house or whether it's something that we contract out, uh, impact studies and other kinds of evaluations. We really want to stay um, on the most recent trends so that we can understand how Appalachia changes, um, what kinds of issues and, and problems you want to tackle, but also opportunities that are out there for, for communities. A major topic tomorrow, although you'll hear about it today, is of course coronavirus. We've all been uh, watching and experiencing um, the impact this has had on daily lives. So we do monitor those cases and deaths in the region and know that it's having a tremendous impact. But we've also responded as well. Um, obviously, we've converted all kinds of in-person events to virtual, like this one. Um, we're assessing the impact on, on the communities. We're providing support to small businesses. Uh, I mentioned the Nonprofit Resource Center. So that's a new initiative to try to help some of the nonprofits that are really struggling these days, as well as just some internal operations that we've had to adjust and, and become, like you, very flexible and very adaptable these days. So all you students, congratulations. You're part of our academies and institutes and our our budding lead leaders, I would say your young leaders, emerging leaders. Um, ARC has recently launched an adult leadership institute for 40 fellows throughout Appalachia to learn about the region, uh, talk to each other about solutions through a nine month program. There's also the entrepreneurship camp, which we just launched, Oak Ridge Summer STEM, and of course, ATP. But back to ATP and why we're here. I will say, um, one of my greatest joys in working at ARC has been listening to what students have to say and their unfiltered thoughts about what's really going on in communities. Um, and especially these days where everything's virtual, it might look a little bit different, but the spirit and intent is the same. We've learned quite a bit over these 20 years on what uh, students see as some of the greatest threats, but also the opportunities out there. If you're curious, we have uh, an ATP alumni survey that's online. And I will say this, after surveying prior ATP students, 65% of them still live in the region and credit ATP with influencing their decision to stay. Uh, and about 60% believe that their participation in this impacted their career choice, whether that was education, whether that was business, whether that was uh, law enforcement. Um, they learned something from this that stuck with them. So one final note before I end here, um, we do also offer an ATP summer fellowship. We had one this year, it was all virtual. Um, it is intended to build on this experience. So next year, uh, we are still offering a temporary paid uh, employment with ARC, um, involved in some short-term research assignments based on our needs, but also on student skills. Uh, it's likely to be virtual that it hasn't 100% been settled. Um, what I will say is that students uh, essentially get to explore a little bit further all of these grants that we've been making and have actual interviews with former grantees to learn things like measuring uh, performance measurement, understanding the impact, uh, talking about lessons learned. So if you're if you find yourself a, a very curious person and likes and like to talk and like to write um, and are very uh, inquisitive about these things, uh, please read a little bit more. Again, it's on our website. Also talk to your faculty advisor if you're really interested um, in, in gathering more. So with that, I'm just gonna say thank you. Uh, good luck. Uh, I know you're all nervous, but as Ron said early on, we have not lost a student yet and we will not uh, ever. So um, thank you all again for participating and look forward to the conference. Thanks.